Hello YouTube and welcome to day five of the Isle of Man TT 2023 and I wanted to start this video with some tea and a question. First the tea and not TT but just tea, a cup of tea. Facebook lit up like a Christmas tree last night. Maybe it was because I did that price check video or someone else noticed it but people commented on the price of tea being £2.50 per cup which is criminal. Maybe I should stop those gentlemen there and have them investigate. At least some of you said it's criminal to charge £2.50 per for a cup of tea up here at the grandstand. So, just to reassure you that the Isle of Man is not the most expensive place in the world for tea, I checked in town. You'd be reassured to know that places away from the grandstand, such as the Buttery or the Calf, both great places for some decent breakfast and a cup of are way cheaper so our in town is way cheaper so why is it so expensive up here at the grandstand well there's a very simple explanation for it in order to have a stand here at the tt in the park you have to pay the Isle of Man government a pretty big amount of money i know some of the amounts obviously they are sort of you know commercially sensitive but due to my involvement with politics and whatnot i am somewhat familiar with what you have to pay to to have a stand here any kind of stand, you know, be a hot dog bar, whatever. And yeah, it's not cheap. So the prices you see includes, it's not the traders being greedy or something like that. They want to make a profit, they have to come here or they are from here. No, there's a good chunk of money that goes to the Alman government. So you are paying, you know, the government for the pleasure of being here. And that's why you pay two pounds fifty for a cup of tea. So that's that out of the way. Now, the second thing I want to do is I'm going to show you a tweet now from the official element TT account and I want you to tell me if you can see what's wrong with it. So this is the tweet in question. Can you tell what's wrong with it? It's not the fact that Dunlop is super fast. It's not that it's here on the left side of the road. It's not anything in the tweet. It is the picture precisely that this is the official TT account. That's a selfie stick or 360 camera stick. They're explicitly not allowed on the track. And when I first saw this tweet, I actually thought it was a warning not to use selfie sticks. Because look how close he is. Now, if that's at the correct bar where I suspect it is, Dunlop would be doing 160, 170 miles an hour, probably, at well into three figures. Imagine if that thing hits you on the head. I really thought this tweet was a warning to say, hey, people don't use selfie sticks or these ridiculous 360 degrees, super long camera sticks. But no, nope, it's actually, you know, a tweet saying, hey, watch the thing. And I really think that from the official account, it would be good if they maybe, you know, would be a bit more careful before they post something because this sets a bad example and I don't want a rider to get hit by one of those things that's going to hurt so yeah, it's just an observation that i thought was you know worth mentioning here so obviously i missed all the racing action today thanks to my day job but i'm gonna try and make up for it by a having a walk around the paddock see what we find tonight after the last qualifying racing starts tomorrow and i'm gonna have a look around douglas itself tonight catch some of the nightlife some of the stuff away from the grandstand and the paddock because so far I'm very much focused on this area and there's a lot more to see so let's have a wander around first and see how this video develops because as usual not much of a plan. Thank you. 
Ne? <laughs> right, we're back at Indy's tent. Last practice is over, the bikes are back. How did it go? Ah, it went not bad, you know, we were a little bit fighting with the suspension setting because we didn't have it completely right, you know, we tried some, you know, options but they didn't work really well, the bike was a little bit moving back and there so then the steering bumper wasn't working well so we just, you know, changed the setting of that as well, you know we have to do different, you know, position for the, for the steering bumper needs to be done on the side instead of it, have it on the top here so we are just put it on the side here what kind of suspension setup do you run on the TT? Is it soft or is it uh, hard? Really How does it differ from a, yeah, from a short yeah. circuit? Yeah, it's very different. You have to do a little bit of a compromise because you have bumpy sections on the circuit and then you have also, you have also the smooth... This kid's bike, seriously, is louder yeah. than a superbike. Yeah, 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 he's on the superbike there. So this circuit needs actually do a little bit of a compromise okay. because there is a lot of bumpy sections. Like into Ramsey yeah, or yeah, especially from Ginger Hall to Ramsey, it's uh, the bumpiest section. And then you have a smooth part on the mountains, so it needs to be quite, you know, quite, you know, have a setting there. So you always do a little bit of a compromise there. But, you know, it takes lots of work, you know, we never stop working here, so it's a tough, you know, job to set up the bike right. Even you've done it, we done it many times this race, but still every year you sort of adjust the settings because you go the, faster and does faster. Does the course change for you? Like, do you feel that, obviously they re-tarmac. 
Oh yeah, the no, retail part. market is great, you know, especially on the waterworks, you know, that, that is uh, some job, it's brilliant. It and was a big landslide, that's what oh, I did. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so they had really, to redo the road. Yeah, it's really, really, really fast that now, and it's not that bumpy as it was. Then the soup is straight, of course, that's mm -hmm. another, you know, good part of it. So, but there is lots of different parts which are getting worse, I would say. You know, yeah, there is some couple of places where there is now bump which there was never before. So, of course, as, as you using the roads and getting older and older, so it will need some more setting adjustments later on. And how do you prepare for a TT? Like, how? What's your? If you want to run a bike here, what's the minimum budget you're looking at just to come here and race a bike for two weeks? Yeah, the minimum budget is about at least seventy thousand pounds. Seventy. Yeah, because if you include the work on the bikes, you have to buy suspension. You have to do lots of things on the bikes. You know, mostly the work. Just the wheels we are using, they are costing two and a half thousand pounds. So people can just imagine how many, many, you know, money you have to spend to make the bikes right. How much are tires? Uh, 400 pounds, just a set of tires, and you're gonna run them just one practice. So you're using, let's say, 10 sets of tires. So there you go. You know, the money just you know flows away, and, and then you have to eat something, and you know, do and the fuel you're using the race fuel. So, How much is that a liter? Uh, I would say 10 pounds a liter. So, what? Yeah, it's not cheap. That's insane. Yeah, it's crazy money, you know, and then you do some things like new letters, new boots, you know, new outfits, you know, then you do some merchandise for the funds, you know, and things. So, so there is many things which are, you know, rising up the budget of, I would say. I wouldn't have expected 70, but that's a lot of money. Just yeah, just, you know, imagine that we have a new bike for this season for the TT and it's specially prepared for the TT and that bike costs nearly 40,000. So, you know, with, with the special fuel tank, special wheels, Everything is made so special, so. And so even if you do a lot of work yourself, uh -huh. it's still. Without a sponsorship, you will never be able to do it. I would say if you are not a yeah. Rockefeller, so. We're just, you know, the next thing because I did a video last year with Matt when we did the Bitcoin bike about sponsorship. People don't realize that outside of the top ten, they're all privateers. They all live yeah. off. Yeah. Short, small budgets, right? Yeah, we are running small budgets. I just brought the bikes in a small van. We are sleeping in a van. Mm. You know, so everything is quite tight, you know, with the budget and then there are some extras like we had to buy a new steering damper today, mm. you know, because the old one is not working well. Then you have to buy a couple of more things like and then suddenly you four thousand pounds is gone, gone, you know. Like the special fuel tank, you know, we bought it just and it cost nearly two thousand pounds. So so it all ads you know so we are really happy for every help and there is always sponsor opportunity here so if I'll you, put your Facebook page yeah, if you want to help comments. out you know just you know don't be ashamed you know to come and there is always no, that's the space. thing I don't think fans realize how easy it is to get involved you know and just approach riders <laughs> yeah that's a nice part of the TT you can talk to the riders and you can just you know spend the time with them you can have a beer when you meet them in a pub downtown and no, so, so it's a very nice atmosphere here and that's why we all do it, you know, if you don't have a fun with it, you know, it will be not why to do it, you know, it's a very dangerous race, you know, this, so you have to be really passionate about that, you know. Do you have a ritual you go through before a race or is it always the same? No, it's uh, always the same, I just, you know, chill out a little bit, you know, get, get you know, my little you know sort of a habit is just to get you know a little bit of a coffee think about the sort of a sort of a turns I'm gonna into you know you just you know play the track you know what to do you know what gear I'm gonna use there what I'm gonna do there so we are sort of planning what is coming next like nervous uh, not really now you know I was nervous you know years when I started you know but now How many years have you done TT now? Uh, I done years? since 2009 well, okay, so, so I done 30 races already here, so okay. it's, it's quite a lot. So some experience is there, of course you need to know the track. The knowledge of the track is the basic. You know, you, if you don't know where to go, it's very difficult. The first, do you still remember your first lap? Oh yeah, I still remember my first yeah. lap, you know, the, the way I was going and, you know, it was amazing. Just the feelings, you know, just the, how do you call it, the pressure, the G's you using, you know, in the bottom of Ray Hill and then you come into Balagheri corner and you just go, oh my God, this is crazy. You know, some places you just go mad and some places you just enjoy, you know, it's very smooth and nice, you know. Do you actually 
realize or recognize the fans? Or uh, are you not really. In not some places you can, you know, in a gooseneck, you know, you can still recognize some faces, but definitely not in like a super straight and things, you know. And you don't hear or really see No, them no, you don't, need, you don't hear that. You are so focused and so concentrated on. So I actually recognized last night, there was one friend of mine sitting on Sube Bridge. He was so close to me when I passed him and I was just just like 20 centimeters from him. And he didn't move. He was just looking and relaxed and chilled out, you know. So it was a funny moment, like, you know, sometimes you have these funny moments where you realize someone and you just go, wow, that was him, you know, and then you have to go back to the track and get constant focus again. Because you can't lose focus. No, right? no, if you lose the focus, you know, Sometimes I lose the focus in a way that I'm coming to schoolhouse corner and then I think, oh, is that the second lap I'm doing? Or because you are so into it that you don't even know how many laps you've done. You know, sometimes you sort of have these moments, you know, but never lose the track of the where you go. But how do you even train for the distance? So if you do the big race, four or six laps, that's that's an insane distance on this track. That's an insane distance on a short track, right? It's yeah, it is. You know, now we've done three days in a row, which we've done four laps every day, mm. and you have to be really physically fit. So I do lots of you know workouts, and you know you have to eat right food, and then you all breaks down here because you're eating burgers and things. <laughs> you know, so the preparation is really tough. You know, you have to be really fit for it. Do you? What do you think of the new format? Because there's only two rest days in the whole two weeks. It's not bad. It's not bad. It keeps you focused. You know, it's you know, I, I enjoy it. I would even appreciate to have every day something. You know, Seriously? extra. It doesn't exhaust yeah. you. Or? No, no. Just one more practice will be good because you are still trying to set up the bikes. You know, mm -hmm. doing maybe adjustments. You know, every practice you do is always better. You know, more practice, more laps, more you know, knowledge of the track. And what's your when so first race day is tomorrow? Yeah, we go on the 600 here, so that's why we are working hardly on that. Mm. Just put a new set of wheels, uh, tires, and you know, just change oil, get the final preparations. Don't really rip it apart anymore. It's oh all no, no. Some of the guys like Dunlop's taking his whole bike apart again. And oh yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, Michael Dunlop is a different level. You know, as you see on the track, you know, he has broke down all the lap records this year, and he's really in good form, I would say. So he he's gonna be the one to beat. I bet he is, but he's well, he has a name to live up to, and I'm oh, always yeah. a, I'm always a bit worried when he's out, but because yeah, it is that you can feel that weight. On his shoulders, yeah, that yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's just. Well, I, you can probably just go and enjoy yourself, right? Oh, yeah, I'm no... just enjoying it myself. I'm not pushed by the sponsors, you exactly. know, to do any results. You know, I always been told just have a fun, enjoy, and exactly. that's what I want to hear. You know, no pressure. I mean, you know, you don't want to pressurize yourself here. You know, mm. it could be. You know, I mean, we we seen a couple of crashes already, so hopefully, hopefully that will not happen tomorrow. I hope so. So far, it's been a yeah, good pretty TT, good so this year. Yeah, let's hope it stays that way. So cool. Well, yeah, safe race tomorrow. I'll, Thank you I'll very much. It I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, give I'll us some likes on Instagram, please. Follow us. You know, give us some following, please. I'll link to you in the comments. I get Brilliant. about ten thousand views per episode now, which is ah, nice. pretty awesome. Really so. nice. You know, good. Yeah. Well done to you. And I want to use that to you know highlight things like this that people might not realize that yeah, if yeah, you guys correct. need help. Come down to the paddock, speak to riders. Yeah, so. please do. Come. Always welcome in my owning. <laughs> well, best of luck tomorrow, mate. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. See you Cheers.
Do something funny. Nice to meet you. Got an autograph <laughs> on the grandstand. Leave me a nice comment and I'll give it away. Among the nicest comments, you can have a Maria Costello autographed grandstand. For free, post it worldwide. Well, as you can see, everything's going on in the paddock. Everyone's getting ready for tomorrow. Some are, you know, set, just tweak the settings and others are taking their bikes apart and like Michael Dunlop do it all themselves. He always does that and he always attracts a big crowd at the tent. That's just who he is. So yeah, that's probably all I can show you from up here right now. Um, I'm gonna head down into Douglas, show you some of the other bits that are part of TT. So let's see what we find downtown. Good evening and welcome to Douglas Promenade. I just got changed, got myself a driver, which by the way is my wife, say hello to Micah. So, because if I drive, I can't really take videos. So let's have a look along Douglas Prom and then show you Douglas and yeah, see what's going on down here.
As you see, the whole promenade is filled with bikes that's really only doing TT. To the left, you see where the fun fair starts, and to the right is where Bushy's TT thing is. You can see the queue probably. We might try and go there later or some other day just to show you. One of the highlights down on the prom is, of course, the fun fair. It's back for the first time in quite a few years, certainly before COVID. It was sort of a last minute addition doesn't add very much to the average TT race fan, but it's something that I think the local, especially the local youth, very much looks forward to. It's the highlight of the year probably, at least down here on the prom. Uh, it's always the same fun fair that comes, pretty much the same rides, but it's just, you know, it's good fun for a place that, to be honest, outside of TT can be a little bit tranquil. It is tranquil. What? What's wrong with tranquil? It's, I can hardly say it's dead. <laughs> okay, outside of TT, the, the Isle of Man, some may call it dead. But it actually, it's picking up all the other tourism. But TT certainly, you know, adds 30,000, 35, maybe 40,000 people to an island of just 85,000. So it adds almost 50% of the population and you feel it. And it's nice to get this bus for two weeks a year. Uh, obviously, we have the Manx Grand Prix as well in, in autumn, but it's a very different crowd. It's much quieter. It's not those big crowds. So if you want to come here and watch the same racing, but if you prefer it a little more quiet, a little cheaper, and a little more with a focus on classic bikes, then yeah, consider coming for the Manx Grand Prix and the classic TT, as I think they call it now. Uh, but TT is full on. It's 30,000 people. It's, you know, party and yeah, fun fair and pubs and whatnot. And we're going to park up now and go for a walk, show you some of the pubs, show you our high street and give you an impression of what it's like down here in Douglas doing TT. First stop tonight, the Legion in Douglas. All right, you may recognize this name, Michael Jack Russell. Yeah. He's the crazy guy who wants to be the first rider to complete every solo and sidecar race. And there's a RAF fundraiser tonight, so we're going to have a quick stop by. There's the mayor. The man we're all here for and the man we're trying to raise some funds for to see him through this uh, incredible quest that he's on. I mean, if he was broken last year, what's he going to be like at the end of this year? Please welcome... Michael Jack Russell. <laughs> Broken already. Um, well, first of all, look at this return out. Uh, just to repeat what PT said, uh, you know, it's uh, we have had a great day on the bike, uh, and it's even better to, to be in great company. So thanks for coming out. I love to see so many friendly faces. You've got two more races than you took on last year with the program changes. Is there two more? Oh, of course. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it, it was a, a bit of a... When they rescheduled the, the TT um, schedule, you know, to the 10 races, I've never done a back-to-back -back TT, so it's always, you know, 13, 15, 17. So it was a, it's a first for me to be back in successive years, so that's exciting in itself. We've certainly picked the weather for it. I've never been to a TT, you know, normally we're not t turning a wheel till sort of Wednesday or Thursday night. So, you know, to come here, get some really good laps in uh, with great people. We've got a lovely team behind us this year and uh, with great support from, from everyone that's been involved, sponsors and, and, uh, and, sort of, and just general supporters just coming into the awning and saying hello. Uh, it's been overwhelming. So, yeah, and we've been pulled from pillar to post, which is great. and. As a privateer, it's always nice to get the three-wheeling banner out there and, and our name out there. So, yeah, thanks very much, Tim. You had a, a tricky night, it's fair to say, last night, but you've had a, a good day today to, to, to more than make up. Yeah, well, I mean, the TT course, it just throws up issues, you know, and 
the guys were rushing around to do bits and pieces last year, uh, sorry, last night, you know, changing over subs, and, and it was literally just the fact that they forgot to put in, I don't know what it is, it's like a, a plunger or something, it sucks the oil up basically, uh, you know, and it, it's just easily overlooked, um, but unfortunately, yeah, you know, it's a four grand motor down the drain for, for no sort of, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, isn't it, it's a TT, so we had an electrical issue on the, the Kawasaki, but we're, we're ready to go for tomorrow's race, you know, and that's, you know, a huge testament to the team that's behind us, you know, they've been crafting, you know, every hour of the day, and, and I can't thank them enough from, from me to you guys, it's been great, and without them, I'd just be watching Ted races, not doing them. And the main thing, of course, is, I mean, the speeds have been so high uh, for a qualifying week, for a practice week, so actually qualifying yourself to race is an achievement in itself. Have you qualified for all the races? I don't know. I haven't checked the time sheets. Uh, yeah, I think we have. You know, we've done. I think we're okay on the. The only one I'm a little bit uh, unsure of actually is the sidecar, if I'm honest. Um, but um, only because, like, you know, the, the lap, lap record was broken in qualifying. So I don't know what the qual qualifying criteria is, but uh, we'll certainly check. Hopefully, I've not let myself down by uh, not making that. But um, you know, we, we'll do what we can when we can, and, and if we're on the grid, we'll, uh, we'll have some safe races. We wish uh, Michael the very, very best. Let's give him a round of applause. Michael's just going to stay here because he's just going to do a game. I'm going to ask you... Uh, so I just really wanted to very quickly show you that. Making sure he's shooting off having a pop crawl through Douglas. You get loads of these little events, and you know, just what Jack is trying to do is pretty mad. Uh, by the way, so the table I was at, that was uh, next to me was Madame Mayer and the person next to her was uh, her husband and then the person next to that, you may have recognized that was uh, the Lieutenant Governor, the representative of the King to the Isle of Man. So yeah, that's, you know, the, the Legion and Douglas, that was that event, I just want to quickly show you that. So let's go into Douglas and see what else we find. In Strand Street, that's the old motorsport merchandise shop. Remember when I said about the new uh, contract for merch? Well, those were the guys who used to do it. Not anymore. Strand Street is our main shopping street in Douglas, certainly, and probably the biggest on the island. Um, so we're just going to walk through here, maybe show you a couple of pubs. Also, Strand Street, if you're looking for, you know, if you're on the island for TT and you look for your souvenirs, it's worth going down because. You have a few uh, pop-up shops coming here, selling I don't know, everything from stickers to letters. Uh, always go to the book company at the end of Strand Street for cheap TT merch and souvenirs. They're probably the cheapest. At the moment, they still have Michael Dunlop's book for $1.99. I don't know why it's so cheap, but you know, go grab a copy. Uh, so yeah, Strand Street is you know a good place to just go shopping during the day. Everything closes at about 5:30. So be quick. Also, a tip is um, check the charity shops. There's a few here. They often have pretty good bargains, TT-related stuff or just bike-related stuff. Always well overlook. So yeah, have a wander around Strand Street. Uh, there's a couple of pubs here as well. Worth checking out. So if you're after your, your shopping fix, this is the place to go. See, that's the new TT merch. If you know all my other videos, you will know that I wear a lot of TT stuff. Half my wardrobe is probably TT stuff. But I haven't bought a single new one because I find them overpriced. And this is not criticism of the company that does them. The quality is really good. If you are in Strand Street during the day, 
Manx kippers. I'm sure you've heard of them. All famous smoked fish. Grab yourself a kipper bath. Actually, the one in Peel is better. Uh, but if you do buy them, whatever you do, do not pan fry them in your house. The house will smell for days. <laughs> I love how busy the place is doing TT. Like usually at this time of night, it's now Friday 8 p.m. Strand Street, like this whole area here, would be it'd be dead. There'd be there'd be nobody here. Absolutely nobody. Whoa. They fold up the pavements. It's that dead. Now look at it. It's all buzzing. It's awesome. Let's maybe try if we can get into Bushy's TT place. I mean, we can get in, it's just uh, very busy and I'm not very good at queuing, but let's have a look at it anyway. Maybe I'll just show you the queue into it. Bushy's, what's it called? TT Village, I think they call it. Okay, predictably there's a massive queue, so I'm literally just gonna show you the queue. And we'll go in some other time. Because I'm not very good at queuing. I'm way too German to be queuing. <laughs> well, just look at the massive queue trying to get into Titi's Bushies. What's it called? Bushies Village? Jeez, it goes all the way back to the Villa Marina. So, And it's locals as much as visitors, you know. It, it really, the TT brings the island to life. Everyone goes out, has a good time. So I will show you the inside some later time, later day, when there's less of a queue. Let's have a look, quick look at the fun fair. Beautiful day down on the prom. If TT is like this, it's like perfection. There used to be a lot more entertainment down here on this part of the promenade. Those of you who've been here before, you'll remember the old Bushy's tent. Well, this is sort of the evolution of it. You might remember the second tent here. You might remember the stunt shows here on the prom. Oh, that's pretty much gone. The, the crowd we get at TT has changed from, you know, a sort of hardcore biker festival to I don't know, more sleek, a bit more commercial kind of thing with a different crowd. Loads more Americans, like I said before. Uh, you know, people from further afield, more reborn bikers as well. Haven't seen a burnout yet, which is completely scandalous, but it used to be, you you know, you have burnouts all the time here and the cops would just look. I don't know if they would still look today, hopefully, probably. Um, one thing I actually noticed is Ada has loads of police here, which is good, you know, they're visible, they keep everyone safe, they check make sure traffic flows, um, they're good guys. But I have never ever on the Isle of Man smelled so much of a certain herb in the air. It feels, feels like when I walk through Toronto or something. So if you are, you know, a connoisseur of a certain herb, be careful, it is not legal on the Isle of Man. We are very, very strict when it comes to that kind of thing. And if you walk past the copper with your not cigarette in your hand, then, you know, that might not end well for you. So I'm not saying you should do it. If it's after me, the stuff should have been legalized ages ago. But just be mindful when you walk around and you enjoy what it is you enjoy, that it's not legal here and they're very, very strict on it. And I can't say what it is because otherwise the YouTube algorithm doesn't like me. But you get my idea. You get the idea, right? Well, we're looking for more lucky winners. All this stuff's got to go to pay because we've got new stuff coming in. As a certified born and bred Bavarian, I'm sure there's nothing Bavarian about this fun house. How hard can it be? We need four frees to win something decent. Let's see. No chance now. <laughs> Just keep going. I don't think we did very well. 
one. So, you're on this size at the minute. If you want another go, I can guarantee you one of these, even if you win all these. It's up to you. Just a small one. Tiny one win. That one? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> At least we got something. <laughs> you know, we were talking about tea prices. Found one that's worse than the grandstand. <laughs> oh, before I forget, the postcards arrived. I got a thousand of these. The lovely grandstand. They're free. So if you find one of these on your bike in the morning, then that was us. So enjoy your free postcard. Well, that's the fun fair done. Just to give you a quick look at the place, uh, where we're heading, home probably. Home, rest for tomorrow. Yes. It's tomorrow, first race day, so we're gonna head home. I'll upload this tonight, so give you, you know, a quick idea of what the last practice day was like, what it's like down here in Douglas. And I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early, for the first race day of 2023. Thank you for watching again and I'll see you around.